Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a three tier wedding cake. To begin, I have baked two six inch round cakes, two eight inch round cakes, and two 10 inch round cakes. These cakes were baked and wrapped the day prior to decorating. First task is to level and cut each cake into two layers. Each tier will have four layers of cake. I do this with a ruler and a serrated knife. I make my layers one inch in height. I have included footage of me layering the three different sized cakes. Now that all my cake layers are cut for each cake, I have taken my 8 inch round cake which is a red velvet mud to show you that I'm going to trim the sides of these cakes. I don't normally do this with my normal round cakes, however today I will be using the lid method to ganache these cakes. So as you can see I have stacked all 4 layers of cake on top of each other and have an 8 inch round cake cardboard at the bottom of the cakes. I am now trimming the cakes, leaving about half a centimetre of space between the cake and the edge of the cake cardboard. I then flip the cake over to make sure that the top of the cake has the same space around it too. Once I've done this, I will repeat the process with the other two tiers. I have sped up the footage for this video due to the wedding cake taking several hours to complete. Moving on to stacking and filling each cake and doing a quick crumb coat on each tier. The top tier is caramel mud cake with dark chocolate filling. The second tier is red velvet mud cake with white chocolate ganache filling and the bottom tier is lemon mud cake with white chocolate ganache filling. If you are wanting to see a slower version of me cutting and filling my cakes, check out my caramel mud cake recipe. I'll include the link below. Once all the cakes were cut, filled, crumb coated and chilled down for a while, I began using the lid method to ice the cakes with the ganache that matched the filling of the cake. The lid method is placing the same sized cake board at the top and bottom of the cake and filling all the space in between with the icing of your choice. Today is ganache. To do this, as you can see, I put a layer of ganache on the top of the cake and smooth that out. Then place the cake board on top of the ganache and use my scraper to make sure that it is in line with the cake board at the bottom. Once happy, I secure the cake board by pressing down on the ganache so the board sticks. I then fill in the sides of the cake with more ganache and use my scraper to scrape back the excess. Until I'm left with perfect sides on each of the three cakes. These then go back into the fridge to chill for a few hours.
wearing some ganache white as this is what the final finish of the cakes will be. Once the cakes were chilled, I started working on the bottom tier first. I removed the top cake board with a sharp knife, running it around the edge of the cake board to release the ganache from the board and peel it off the cake. I would then fill in any imperfections on the top with some more ganache to ensure a smooth top. I also ran my hands over the top edge to smooth out the lip that was created by the ganache. Once happy, I was ready to finish the cake with a final thin layer of white ganache. As you can see, I have used very soft ganache to ice this cake. Soft ganache is the easiest to work with when you need a nice smooth finish on your cakes. This bottom tier I also put on the finishing cake board before I finished giving it the final coat of white ganache. Always add more ganache than you need as you'll be scraping back most of it to get the finish you want on all of the cakes. As you can see if there were any spots that needed more ganache I would put more on and then scrape it back. Repeat the process until you are happy with how the tier looks. This wedding cake was to look rustic so my friend wanted to have the rough edges on each of the tiers. To structurally support this cake, the two bottom tiers had dowels in them. You can use bubble tea straws, wooden dowels and also plastic dowels depending on your preference and availability. Today I used wooden dowels. To add the supports for the bottom tier, I placed an 8 inch cake board in the centre of the cake and marked it with the dowel. I then pushed my dowels inside that circle to support the cake. One in the centre and four more in a square pattern to cover all points of the cake. To do this, I push the dowels into the cake and mark a spot with a pencil of where they need to be cut. I then pull the dowels out, cut them and then push them back into the cake ensuring that they're touching the bottom of the cake board. The top tier doesn't need any supports, so this cake is just iced in white chocolate ganache and put aside to sit on top of the middle tier. In the same process as the bottom tier, I remove the lid of the cake, fix up any of the imperfections from the lid being removed and give it a final ice. The middle tier once ice also needs to have supports just like the bottom tier. Thank you. 
I have placed a 6 inch round cake cardboard in the centre of the cake and marked it. I then pushed the four dowels into the cake and marked them with a pencil where they needed to be cut. Once cut, I push them back into the cake, making sure that they're touching the bottom of the cake board. Again, those four dowels were in a square-like pattern. Now, while those tears are chilling in the fridge to firm up the final layer of ganache, I'm moving on to preparing the fresh flowers for the cake. I used scissors and floral tape to prepare all of the fresh florals being used on this cake. To prepare the flowers, you cut the stem at the height that you want and remove all of the leaves and anything else along the stem. Here I am cutting the flowers to the height that I think I need. I then take a piece of floral tape. You can wrap the whole stem, but I tend to only wrap the part that is actually going into the cake. So I take an inch or so of tape and grab the flower that I want to wrap and start at the bottom of the stem. I start by covering the part of the stem that was cut first and continuing to wrap the tape up the stem of the flower. Floral tape needs to be stretched to activate it and makes it stick to the stem as you are wrapping it up. As I am wrapping the stem, I am also pulling the tape at the same time. I repeat this process with all the flowers that I have chosen and some gum leaf and other bits that were provided by the florist. Now the flowers are prepared, it's time to stack this cake and decorate it. Starting with the bottom tier, I'm sticking each tier together with some chocolate ganache. I have placed some ganache on the top of the cake around the supporting dowels to hold the tier in place. I then place the cake straight on top of the ganache and push down on the cake firmly. I then repeat the same process with the second tier to attach the top tier. Press down firmly once happy with the positioning of the cakes. Once I was happy, I fill in the gaps you can see between the tiers with more ganache. Piping the ganache onto the gap and wiping the excess away with my finger. I repeat this on the middle tier as well. Once happy, it's time to start putting the flowers onto the cake. I picked which side of the cake that I wanted to be the front and started arranging the florals on the cake and pressing them into the tears. You can also put straws in the cake where you want the flowers to slot in so that there is less resistance when pushing the stems into the final cake. I chose to only decorate the top of the middle tier and the top of the bottom tier based on the inspiration my friend gave me using the colours of the flowers provided from the florist. I played around with this for a while until I was happy with the placement and the selection of colour. I did actually change around the roses after I finished filming this cake in the thumbnail that you can see the white rose at the front is actually orange in the thumbnail. Once happy with the placements of all the florals, I just needed to box up the cake for delivery. And that's it guys, that's how I made this wedding cake. If you liked this video and want to see more tutorials, all things baking and cake decorating, please like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any videos. I upload every Wednesday. See you next time!